doors are closed. Welcome to an area of what some people call British Columbia that is truly super natural. there was a clearing with wooded areas on both sides. It was the site of a fierce and bloody battle. Two warring counts would meet in this clearing, fight, and then retreat to rest, each to their own side. They were very evenly matched. They fought for a long time until each side had only a few warriors left alive. Suddenly, many white birds flew overhead and landed on the clearing which was the battlefield. As the warriors watched, the birds danced, crossing over each other and moving forward, crossing over each other and moving back. Their fine white feathers covered the field. The warriors, seeing this, laid down their weapons and danced also, danced into what was once their battleground, danced and rejoiced at the simplicity of the peace they made. The down is used today to bring peace into a space where an important event is about to unfold. Welcome now to that long ago place. Welcome to Galgani, the battleground where peace was made. The Gitsan and the Witsuating peoples are made, made up of many clans which include fireweed, beaver, frog, wolf, and eagle. They live in a territory that covers 22,000 square miles. They are bordered on all sides by different nations. The Niska, Simshan, Haisla, Teltan, Nutsune, Shilkolton, and Sekini. and the Witsuotain walk the land and become one with the spirits and life forms there. They place their canes in the earth, merging the power of the land, the animals, and themselves, creating a bond of respect with all life that will never be broken. they mark off their territories as their own. I am a chief of the salmon people. My name is Guharix. It means good swimmer. Like the Gitsan and the Witsuotain, my people are also made up of many families. Spring, Sakai, Pink, Koho, and Steelhead. Every year we journey up the rivers and streams to our homes. Each family to our own schedule. Each family to our own place. Our streams are not deep, so we must plan our journeys wisely. We do not want to get into each other's way. And so the springs share their name with the season in which they travel. The sockeye, here's one now. The sockeye travel in middle summer with the pinks close behind. The coho here enjoy the rays of the late summer sun. And the hardy steelhead choose to journey in the early autumn. together every year 
is the large rock in the canyon of the river that is called Watsonka. It is here we have a very big reunion, splashing and jumping in the foaming water with brothers, sisters, and cousins who have all traveled from hundreds of miles apart to this one special spot. Then, together, we journey up the waterfalls and through the rocky streams to our homes. There, we select a mate, lay our eggs, and die, leaving our bodies as nourishment for all the life in and around the river, for the animals, for the birds, for our own offspring, and for the people along the shores. In exchange for this, they treat us with respect, returning our remains to the river and protecting the bits of stones where our eggs are rested. The people know what the animals do, with the needs of the salmon, the beaver, the caribou, and other are, because long ago their ancestors married the animals, learned all their ways, and passed on the knowledge from one generation to another. A hunter dreams, a hunting dream, an animal encountering dream. Naote wakes. In the waking world, he cleanses himself outside, and he cleanses himself inside, so that he is acceptable to the animal. Then he travels the path of his dream.
Sutai Hanikit Q. Tezul Puni Respen Taste with years. Zinas Nech Slaitet Det Needle Guik Tal Bitsqua Sutai Hanikit Q. Tezul Puni with all there is to do, with cutting down the trees, clearing and burning the bush, hauling the rocks, hauling the water, making the earth ready to plant, with all the cooking and cleaning and cooking again, there would be no time to think, let alone get lonely. on land, buying for $50 and selling for $1,200 more than that two years later. How could a youngest son, whose parents' house had been burned to the ground, who'd been cleared off their own land to make room for the raising of sheep, pass up an opportunity like that? He could not. Neither could I. We left our families. We left our parents, and our brothers and sisters, and all our friends. It wasn't until I'd heard that the ship we came over on had sunk on its way back that I truly believed I would most likely never see any of them again. It would be difficult for my family to imagine me here. I had never built a fire in my life before. I never had to look for water. Do you know how many pots of snow it takes to wash your hair? Thirteen. <laughs> if you're going to rinse it, then you use it to wash the dishes. Then you use it to wash the floors. Praise the Lord, it's summer again, is all I can say. Oh, except for the flies. <laughs> what a lot of complaining. Really is not all bad. The flies do go to sleep when the sun goes down. Oh, and 
sometimes, if we're not too tired after a full day. Francis and I, we sit out here on the porch. We look over at raw shades of old now. And watch the moon. It is the same moon I have always known, and yet somehow, somehow in the midst of all this, it makes me feel that I have found home in this huge and empty land. And that for the first time in my life, I have... Helena! Helena! What? Get into the house! Why? Get into the house! I will deal with this. Oh, what, Francis? Deal with what? Oh, Helena! Stop! What are you me about? We have no idea what they want. You go, Martha. Get down, feet! How much does the guy come in? Yes, Joe's to stop. Yes. <laughs> berries. How about berries? It is a present. were like white driftwood on the beach. They were thought of as poor relatives who were far away from home and would respect our home. Then the fences started appearing. Lovely day. Not bad for a first fence. What do you say? Oh, that is a lovely cane. Is it very old? May I see it? Oh. Very beautiful. And it's all done by hand. You know, a lot of folks back home thought Helena and I were, well, uh, reckless moving out into all this wilderness. But the fact is, well, the fact is, there wasn't enough land to go around. Here, all we have to do is lay a claim, fence it off, and it's ours. The people from my clan hunt all over there. Oh, oh, really? Well, I would very much be obliged if I could accompany you on a hunting expedition someday. I cannot seem to sneak up on the big ones the way you people do. The fairy guards are here! Yes. So they are. Well, <laughs> You can still pick berries. One thing there is here is a great deal of berries. I'll tell you what, we'll share them with you. All you have to do is ask. <laughs> I think this is not a fence. I beg your pardon? I think this is not a fence. I think it is a trap, like my trap for Sam. Oh, wait, wait. Before you go, I, uh, 
Well, uh, here. It is a gift. My grandmother says if we drink that, it will turn us white. Oh, your grandmother's a silly old woman. Here, here, take it. We're going to have to wrestle with these weeds every year. None of your legends, Helena? They are not legends, Marianne. They are the truth from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have virgin birth also, you know. <laughs> Swallow the needle of a fir tree and you bear a child. You had a big flood, so did we. You have a legend about a big flood? They're not legends, Helena. They're a dog. <laughs> History is handed down. They're the truth. <sighs> yes, of course. I thought James was coming with you today. Get James. It is with his uncle at a meeting. Yes. I'm not supposed to tell. Is anything wrong? No. Marianne. Nothing is wrong. It is supposed to be a secret. A secret? Oh, well, I will not tell anyone. <laughs> I promise. No. Please. James's uncle is a chief. He is preparing to travel to Ottawa to meet the crown. All the chiefs are going together. Well, what does this have to do with... James will be chief when his uncle dies. So there's a great deal to talk about. Well, I did not know that James was going to be a chief. Yes. <laughs> his uncle was visited in a dream by a spirit just before James was born. The spirit was a great hunter and a chief many years ago. The spirit said that James would be his uncle's own grandfather come back to life. This is why James will be a chief? Yes. James will inherit this chief's name. It is the names that are handed down from generation to generation through the mother. Hmm. You call yourself by your husband's name. Why is that? Well, when a woman marries, she gives up her own name, and the family calls itself by the name of the father. But what of your name, your land and position? Do you lose them? Well, I did not have any land or position to lose. <laughs> but what of your family, your mother and your sister? Francis and I will start a new family. Without your mother and sisters? Yes. Is this what it means to be Christian? Oh, no! It's... Well... Perhaps it does. All of our lands are handed down from uncle to nephew through the mother. We never divide them. But now the settlers, some of the newcomers have burnt our houses to the ground. They have built new houses for themselves where ours were. This is the reason the chiefs are going to Ottawa. The crown wants us to be farmers on small pieces of land and to divide those pieces up from father to son. Soon I think we will have nothing left. <laughs> 
Just like what happened to you. Surely no one in authority will force you to do that. Oh, yes. The messengers of the Crown would. The Indian agents would. I have the honor to stick. No, 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 no. I have got the honor to stick. I have the honor to stick. of R.E. Loring, Indian agent, 1888 till 1912. I have the honor to state that there is something feverish and unwholesome in the air. Indians are preparing for a big secret meeting and covert threats of bloodshed against whites may to take place if no answer soon be given to Capilano deputation before premiers of Wolf and Loyola and Ottawa would advocate to give Indians early advice that their grievances be investigated sometime during May next. Navigation closed, reply by wire. The police told us that the law was the British law and not the Indian law. If ever we went against the Crown's authority, although we might kill a great number of whites, the Crown soldiers would hunt us down like rabbits. I have the honor to state that we have last year a visit by the Right Reverend A. Daunton Will, O.M.I., D.D., Bishop of New Westminster, B.C., and by Father Maurice. Through the seemingly irresistible magnetism of the Right Reverend's charming personality, the honorable gentleman caused the destruction by fire of those ceremonial paraphernalia which still bound the inhabitants of two villages to the customs and ideas of prehistoric days and prevented them from entering into the spirit of full civilization. Bishop Dottenwheel, if you please. Come around, me children. Come around. Oh, come around. <laughs> if you have real heathenness and have become Christian, go and have your heathen regalia and all throw them into the fire. <laughs> have you lost your families to measles and smallpox? Have you lost your families to measles and smallpox? Yes. Yes! Then come to the Lord, children! Come! Come! Into the fire! Do you burn them without regretting? Yes. 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 When the fire burns up good, all the fire goes right up to heaven, and you have taken them all <laughs> from your house. When the fire refuses to burn, there are some left. Let us pray. In Domina Patre. The priest taught us to close our eyes to pray. When we opened them, our land was gone. Amen. honor to state 
that an improved condition of affairs prevails here. The general health of the Indians of the district continues to remain excellent. Those in any way lacking are the old, who have lost the power to adopt to new methods, and then the evolution of things will soon have passed away. I will continue my utmost in the interest of the people in whom such wonderful a change was effected. When considered that not many years ago their dwellings were primitively rough, their coverings but skins and blankets, their gardening of the crudest sort, their discomforts many, their pleasures few. Everything is gone. My traps, all my traps. Not one of them came to ask permission. And they will not. This will make them understand. No. The punishment for what they have done is death. By our own law, Hannah. We hide our feasts away in secret. Are we so powerless? Have we forgotten everything? This is not power. This will only bring more of them. And they will have guns. And we will have guns. Is this a little boy who is going to be a chief? They have emptied my mother's land! Burned it, taken everything from it, pushed my traps into the earth, and just to reduce! They have emptied my mother's land. I am supposed to take care of it. I will not be a chief. You will be a chief. An empty chief with no power. You will be a chief. It is expected of you. And you will not go out and kill white people just because they are ignorant. It will not teach them anything. They will be followed by more of the same. I will not be a chief. There is nothing left. We must understand them, yes. It is the only way. Ax, 
Dam dut slaks. Alan skist. Ksigusak. Kawil mich. Kaldo. Dam machen sanden. Lach de dach. Sigit ocht. Sachlaks. Kiss the ass. And like a someday. And spy yahoo. Damn to its lacks. A land skeezed. Sugar suck. Cowl meat. Caldo. Damn machin sanden. Lach de dach. Sigit ocht. Sachl aks. Kiss raas. Anlega sem deg. Anspa jach. Dam dutschl aks. Alan skist. Sigur sak. Kawil mich. Kaldo. Dam machen sanden. Lach de dach. Sigit ocht. Sach. 110 truckloads a day. That's how much timber we can get out of this place. If we work hard enough. 110 truckloads a day. You ever seen a loaded logging truck? Ooh, that's a lot of wood. <laughs> I'm Larry Weevil, yeah. New Star Timber. I feel sorry for these people. I do. No, no, I, 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 I really do. A way of life has ended. And I understand that. I always had a hankering for the backwoods. I lived in harmony with the forest, the fish, and the animals. I spent months on end living off the forest, and I loved it like a mother. I worked with Indian people, and we spoke the same language, if you know what I mean. We were close to the earth. But we live in a different time now. We live in a global economy. Spiritual values are not a luxury we can afford anymore. Those trees out there are not a forest, they're a bank. <laughs> we have got to learn to make intense use of our resources. Here, have a tree. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, have a tree. Yeah, it's cheap, yeah. <laughs> Plant a tree for me, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> the sound of money. You see, resources by themselves are not wealth. A tree that's standing someplace back in the bush does nobody any good except maybe some squirrel that chews pine cones off it until an enterprising businessman comes along and builds a road to that tree and builds a mill to manufacture it and flies off to China and Japan and Argentina and tries to find customers for that tree. That tree has absolutely no value. We are talking corporate survival here. If you clear cut the forest so the trees are all down, the birds fly away, the animals are gone, and the soil flows down into the river and onto the gravel where the salmon spawn. Then there's no more salmon all down the 
the river. And that makes it easier to clear cut the forest so the trees are all down, the birds fly away, the animals are gone, and the soil flows down into the river and onto the gravel where the salmon spawn. Then there's no more salmon all down the river. And that makes it easier to clear cut the forest so the trees are all down, the birds fly away, the animals are gone, and the soil flows down into the river and onto the gravel where the salmon spawn. <laughs> then there's no more salmon all down the river. And that makes it easier to clear cut the forest so the trees are all A hunter dreams. A hunting dream. What? An animal encountering dream. Who is that? Larry. Who is that? Larry. It's your mother. <laughs> You're not my mother. It's time. Time for what? You didn't think you could just take and take and never give anything back, did you? Ah, cut that crap! Who are you? I... <gasps> oh, my God! Larry. What? Larry. What? I'm a Sam. No! No, it can't be! Oh, let me through here, let me through. Larry. What? We have your front end loader, Larry. Oh, no. <laughs> and we are not going to let you through without asking permission anymore. Oh, come on, fellas, please. How can you learn, Larry, to live at peace with the earth? Oh, I don't know. I want to share. <laughs> oh, I really do. <laughs> I just don't want to get ripped off. What are you going to do, do, do with me? What do you think? No! No! Please! Please! Don't turn me into a tree! <laughs> Perhaps in a hundred and fifty years, when Larry is a mature tree, he will understand. As the earth moves to make the necessary corrections that will heal itself, so do the chiefs of the Gitsan and the Witsoatane. February 11, 1988, the first blockade to stop illegal logging in the territory. More actions will follow. Welcome to Gawagani today. My grandfather has taught me very many things. He says I am the spirit of his great uncle, who is one of the chiefs who traveled to Ottawa in the early 1900s. My grandfather lost both his parents to smallpox, and he was quite young, about 11, I guess, and so he went off to residential school. His grandmother, she didn't want to let him go, but the local priest said he could arrange it. All my grandfather's friends and cousins were there, so I guess he sort of talked his grandmother into it. I'm like him a lot. We both really love to swim. He says, when he was a kid back at home, any time he wanted, he'd go down to the river with this little pond and swim all day long. But when he got to the residential school, well, here's the school playground, and at the bottom, there is a lake. But right before the lake, there was a fence, right here. Wednesdays and Sundays, they'd go out for walks, out in the country, all in the line, with the whole row of disciplinarians in the back, he says. The kids used to speed up a half mile ahead, and they'd go in the bush just run. So he said if there's a poor little rabbit in the area, he was caught right away. All these little kids hollering, grab, 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 and everybody ran into the bush. Sometimes they'd roast it right where they were. 
course, that sort of thing wouldn't go unpunished. They made the kids line up for everything. Line up to eat, line up to go to bed, line up to go to church, to go to class. They got caught talking or whispering in their own language, or even if they went out of the building without permission. They got sent to the shoe room. The shoe rooms where the kids got lickings. They had a strap, a woven fiber, a belt off a threshing machine. They'd make the kids roll up their sleeves so the belt would hit them up to here. It looks nice and soft, I guess. Of course, some kids got lickings every day. Now if it was me, I'd run away. My grandfather said kids did, except if they got caught, they get brought back and tied to a bed and beat with a leather harness. Those little kids were really penned in. They'd get there at five years old and sometimes not leave till they were 16. One thing the church never thought about though was that they were all meeting kids from all of the northern part of the territory. Kids from Athlon, Telegraph Creek, Fort Ware, Fort St. James. A lot of them are chiefs or leaders now. And they all have this in common. And it ties them together. The residential schools. And now, they're teaching their grandchildren. I bet you the church never thought about that. going to do about those damn thistles, Helen. Oh. Oh, my poor aching feet. Oh. Looks like we're gonna have to spray those weeds with Tordon again, I guess. Tordon? Oh, but that stuff made such a mess out of everything last time, Frank. I know, I know, but the underbrush. It isn't Tordon poisonous. Helen, I am gonna make this place into farmland if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> Couldn't we get someone to pull them off by hand? I mean, there's certainly enough people around here who could use the work. What the hell is this? That came today. Those bastards! They're gonna steal our land right out from underneath us! No! Oh, no, it doesn't say We would have been paid off in six months! It doesn't say that. The hell it doesn't, Helen! This is a lawsuit aimed specifically at our land! It's been done by lot number, for Christ's sake! Everyone who hasn't got a clear title yet got one. It just says the land is frozen. Well, see? There's a freeze on the sales of all crowns. Well, that's just hunky-dory. We've got years invested here, you know. Yeah. Oh, we know. They might be willing to sell it to us cheaper than the government. Oh, yeah, for sure. Hello? Just wait, find out before. Anybody home? Hello? Oh, shoot. That's James and Marianne. Not now. See, I told you. Come on, let's go. Let's just go to the door. Be good. <laughs> Helen? <laughs> Helen? Hi. 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 Didn't you hear us call? No. Can we come in? Well, sure, yes. Of course. Come on in. It's nice to see you. Hi, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Our PCR broke down. Do you want to watch a movie? 
A movie. A movie sounds great. Uh, you guys want some tea? Sure. Yes, please. Boy, the weeds are looking pretty bad out there, Frank, old buddy. <laughs> Does anybody want a beer? Can I have another beer? <laughs> you grew up on reserve, didn't you? Yeah, mostly. You ever worked your land? You mean my backyard? I mean worked your land. Got out there and broke your back to clear it and to make it into something. I got sweat drops over every square inch of that ground out there. What's going on? Tribal Council has put a freeze on the sales of all Crown land until the court case is over. Why do you people want to steal our land? Whoa! <laughs> this is not just Tribal Council, okay? It's also the hereditary chiefs. And I don't think anybody's saying anything about stealing anyone's land, Frank. This is a lawsuit aimed specifically at my land. You attack a man's land, James, you attack his life. I've got a deep down desire to be better off than moving from one sweat job to another sweat job. And so I applied my body to the land, into developing it, into making it into something. Is it necessary to make the land into anything? Why not? What do you think the good Lord gave his dominion over the earth for? It says in the Bible All the this dominion. stuff. Now look, look. You know I'm not a racist, right? <laughs> but all this stuff about letting the land do what it wants. Your whole reserve isn't doing anything with your land. Okay, okay, maybe you're growing a few spuds on it, but you're not developing it. Oh, come on, what does developing mean? The government gives you anything you want. All you have to do is ask. If you're not interested in developing the land you've got, what do you want mine for? Nobody said anything about <laughs> kicking you off your precious land. We had all this. 22,000 square miles. Native people walked every inch of this land. We survived on it. We made a living on it. <coughs> You're pissed off because you've got 200 acres for a half dozen people. And now it's frozen? Hell, on our reserve, we've got 600 people crowded onto about 300 acres of non-arable land. It's been frozen for a long time. I never had to chase any Indians off this land so I could fart. Well, yes, Frank. There wasn't actually anybody on this very spot when we got it. Whose side are you on, anyway? Oh, cry out of yours. Whose side? Of course you never had to chase anyone away. <coughs> One of the first things the settlers did when they moved into this territory was burn our grandparents' houses to the ground to make room for their own farms. It was the middle of winter. Those settlers! Mary Ann. My grandparents were running away. They'd been burned off their own land back in Scotland. Is that an excuse for what people like them did here? Do you know what it feels like for me to drive past places that I know used to belong to my family? To know the connections? The pain is reversing itself. It's got to. Of course it's gonna hurt, but maybe it's about time. Yeah, and the difference is if it hurts too much, you could just pack up and leave. We can't. Neither can we. You left some place to come here. If you wanted, you could leave here to go someplace else. My grandparents may have come from somewhere else. But this is my home now. Every bit as much as it is yours. are here. 
here. And I want my children to grow up here. But you don't belong here. That's not fair. We're here. If we're messing something up, fine, tell us. But in order to do that, you're going to have to see us for the people we are. And the people we are, your friends. Why don't you start acting like it? Shut down on love and you change the way it is done. You stop thinking just about today. You stop ripping your skin off to get the trees. And you build small businesses that make things from the trees so people here can buy them. They're shipping everything out of your cheap and buying it back expensive. And now they're leaving us with these wages. And when the land is dead, they're gonna take even the wages away. And you know that, don't you? The point is that no bunch of old men who are living in some happy honey ground fantasy from the past are gonna dictate to me what I can or cannot do on my own land. Hell, if I wanna clear cut this land bald and sell it to- Stop talking about something you don't understand! I'm gonna be one of those old men one day. And you're crazy if you think they're living in the past. They've trained all their lives to be a chief and have a responsibility to their houses, to their clients, to protect their territories today! And in case you haven't noticed, pale face, chiefs come in male and female. Fire! 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 Both of you! Stop it! Just like the bank. No. The bank is a corporation. It'll take that land to sell it to someone else, probably for a profit. They turn the land into real estate. But the land is not real estate. It is not for sale. It is our equal partner. And as equal partners, all we can do, the land and us, is to try to take care of each other. Our grandparents did it. We're trying to do it. And hopefully our grandchildren will have a chance to try to do it too. Great! What about our grandchildren? Well, your grandchildren too, if that's what you want. But you'll have to contribute in the feast. But I still won't own my own land, will I? I think what they're saying, Frank, is that it isn't really possible for anyone to do that. Oh, come into the 1980s, folks. The traditional ways are not going to work in the modern world. Yes, they will. They're working now. We can't stop them. What's the matter, Frank? Do you want a master plan? Yeah. Yeah. You bet I do. Well, maybe we're going to have to discover what that is together. Watch a movie? It's what you came here for. Jeez. 
Guys, you guys want some popcorn? Popcorn's Indian food, you know. <laughs> if this is all so friendly, why didn't somebody come around and explain? Why like this? Court, I guess. Hell, we've gone to a foreign court in a foreign territory to ask for something back that we never gave away. The court just turns things into arguments. Well, maybe I better go to court, too. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't think that there's a single judge in all of Canada who's going to be crazy enough to go down in history as the one who gave British Columbia back to the Indians, do you? It's not going to happen. It'll happen. Eventually, it'll have to happen. Because by their own laws, we never signed anything away. They've made up all these new kinds of rules. Now they're going to have to follow them. It's really great, Frank. That in the 80 or so many years that your family's been here, you've learned to love the land so much that you are prepared to fight for it. You just think though, what we might be prepared to do. James, please don't go away mad. You talk to him. He's the one who's convinced we're trying to steal his land. If it's not us, Frank, it'll be our children. If it's not them, it'll be their children. Why can't we work together now to change things for the better? By attacking my land? Nobody's! I'll call you. Mary Ann, wait! Look, I'm sorry. There's nothing for you to be sorry about. Yes, there is. I'm trying. I'm trying to understand. I know you are. I have to go after my hothead husband. <laughs> He's just like his grandfather. Don't you start going native on me, Ellen. <laughs> Not now. Can't you see what's happening all around us? It's not James that's holding on to the past, Frank. It's you. Oh, a hogwash. Damn it, I have the right to own private property. It is a basic fundamental right. <laughs> divided up so much where they came from that there was nothing left. 
That's why they came here in the first place. Do we have to do the same thing? Where else is there to go? That's just it. There is nowhere else to go. We have got to make a stand. Nobody's going to look after our interests here but us. It's a matter of everyone being equal. Frank, does everyone being equal mean everyone being white? In a way, yes, I suppose it does. Where are you going? Helen, come back! I... Oh. Everybody's special. The French are special. The refugees are special. <laughs> the Indians are special. Christ! Helen! I don't want the responsibility. There was a large rock in the canyon at Hagelgat. Do you remember? My mother remembers. That means I remember. It was a place where we all came together. So many of us on our way back to our birthplaces. We danced and jumped in the foaming water, getting ready to tackle the falls. It was a place to celebrate life and the death that always precedes birth. Those of us that were too tired to continue the journey would come to the shore there and give ourselves to your people. Why did they explode the rock at Hagelgat? The Department of Fisheries said the rock was stopping your journey up the river. It was how they explained the decrease in numbers. Did the Department of Fisheries not think our decrease in numbers had anything to do with the large boats at the mouth of the river? No. Do they not think now that artificially manufacturing our children will weaken us even more? No. We no longer celebrate in Hagelgat. Another link in the chain is broken. Soon it will all collapse. Our laws are being broken even by your own people. But how am I to know when I'm ready to become a chief? It is not your decision to make. Your task now is to seek knowledge of yourself. Self-knowledge is the first step along the secret path to self-control. Discovering self-control will bring you self when you have achieved self-power, controlled power, the people will see that you are worthy of a chief's robe. Your robe of power will come to you alive, containing the strengths of many chiefs before you. It will give you the courage to lead with authority and responsibility. Hey! You down there. What are you doing? <laughs> Mind my own business. Do you have a permit for that net? It's Saturday, you know. Do you have a permit for that net? No. One. There is no fishing Friday at 6 p.m. to Sunday at 6 p.m. If you had a permit, you'd know that. Two. There are quotas on the amount of fish that can be taken from this My river. family has been fishing here long before anyone invented it the paper your permit is printed on. We have our own quotas. If somebody wants to hunt or fish in our land, they get permission from us. Is that so? Yes! The salmon have a schedule that they keep to. 
And our schedule is a salmon schedule. Well, the Department of Fisheries has a schedule too. And that schedule is enforced by the Crown. What the hell is this damn Crown? Everybody keeps talking about it. <laughs> it's the Crown, wise guy, that says, now I'm going to take that net away from you and burn it. Like hell you are. I've got a smokehouse. I have people to feed. The government of British Columbia has systematically burned our houses down as recently as 1983. Now the crown burns our nets in the same way it burned our grandparents' robes years ago. They take the nets away with shotguns that are meant to kill. to buy new fishing nets. But for some of us, the price of applying for permits to an outside government to fish on our own land is even more costly. So we go to our family, to my client for fish. We are able to do this because the fences, the residential schools, the death and ported in blankets, the road burnings, the continued disrespect for the land, even the denial of our economic and justice systems. None of these have accomplished what they were intended to do our system of governing ourselves is intact. We have not traveled this long journey, accepting newcomers into our home and teaching them ways to survive, only to be told that we may dance our dances and carve our carvings, but that we should not believe we can govern or that we never have. BC Supreme Court Chief Justice McEckert is concerned that our, our oral histories are nothing but anecdotes. Is the truth only the truth if it is written on white paper? Our duh are like a windmill. They go around and around. They go from one generation to another, and no one changes them with the stroke of a pen. James wanted to go out and beat heads after that day on the river, but he did not. He governed himself. Self-government is personal. It is individual. It is being responsible ourselves, all of us. As we stop those people who are destroying our land, we set up blockades and take their equipment away from them. If we do not do this now, when the court case is over, there will be nothing left. And we state what is in all our hearts, the true law. Not a law that some wants somewhere else has invented. Not a law that changes every four or five years. But the eternal law, the law of the earth, we fish, without permits, together. We select a site near the village of Kipungah, on the banks of the Skeena River. It is known for being a place of international gatherings, and it is called... NKS. It has a good view of the river from both directions, and a bridge for the media, if they want it. We have a lot of committed souls, Gitsan, Mitsote, Niskar from up the Nass River, Russian, Ukrainian, the people from the church, Portuguese, French, Irish, Sakai, and Coal. The Department of Fisheries rents a Huey helicopter to run their troops around in, and, and we, we build, build a smokehouse. Smoke it is what we stand for. We teach the children to fish. We feed the hungry. We learn you don't have to be Indian to practice self-government. We obey the laws and timetables of the earth, building up instead of tearing down to those people who want to provide an artificial timetable for our lives to work by, we say, you, you will not, not do it. it. Our power is the land. The land is ours. And we know it.
Sankist Zutai Xagusak Talbitsqua Kaulmish Sit Needle Quick Kaldo Lighted Tamakhl Sandu Sinas Nair Tamakhangis Sit Needle Quick Sit Happen. Sass. Kiss Ras. Cezur. Sit needle quick. Caldo. I am a chief of the salmon people. My name is Guhadix. It means good swimmer. There are human footprints in soft earth at Goosley Lake. Footprints intact since time out of memory. Not so many years ago, we would stand with our feet in these footprints and wait for the sun when it rose behind the peak of Gilad Thursday Time Mountain. We would know it was time to go home. And so we would travel along trails like the salmon in the river, like the caribou in the forest, meeting friends who would join the procession, linking up from hundreds of miles apart. Each of us in time to the natural rhythms and laws of the earth. Do you see the sun? Come home with us now. Whether you are Gitsan or Wetzelte, Haida or Niska, English or French, European or Asian, brown or red, white, yellow or black, come home with us now to Galagani, to the battleground where peace was made. These are Nohka. Our footprints stretching back to time out of memory. May we walk gently together. Gala walk, gala no, dim na still dim chicken. Gala walk. Galano, dim na still nim jigun. Galawak, galano, dim na still nim jigun. Thank you for witnessing what was said and done here today. Headlines Theatre is very honored to be in Musqueam and Squamish territory today. Uh, it is a tradition in the Feast Hall to give gifts. 
So we'd like to give each of you a gift now. If we miss you for any reason, please pick one up at the door. Also, we would like you, our honored guests, to speak, to share your truth and understanding about ancestral land and self-government with us. We have Ardeth Wilson here from the Gitsan Wet'suwet'en Tribal Council to respond to any questions you may have. We're going to take a short break and then come back for our second act, our discussion. But before we do, I would just like the folks that I gave the trees to today to take them home and put them in the fridge and then plant them tomorrow, okay? Thank you. And please come back so we can talk.